The Selfish Giant by Oscar Wilde, illustrated in a bridge by Alexis Dickon. Every afternoon, as they were coming from school, the children used to go and play in the giant's garden. It was a large, lovely garden with soft green grass. Here and there, over the grass, stood beautiful flowers like stars, and there were twelve peach trees that in the springtime broke out into delicate blossoms of pink and pearl, and in the autumn, bore rich fruit. The birds sat on the trees and sang so sweetly that the children used to stop their games in order to listen to them. What are you doing here? He cried in a very gruff voice and the children ran away. My own garden is my own garden, said the giant. Anyone can understand that and I will allow nobody to play in it but myself. So he built a high wall all around it and put up a notice board. Trespassers will be prosecuted. Spring came, and all over the country there were little blossoms and little birds. Only in the garden of the selfish giant it was still winter. The birds did not care to sing in it as there were no children, and the trees forgot to blossom. The only people who were pleased were the snow and the frost. Spring has forgotten this garden, they cried, so we will live here all the year round. The snow covered up the grass and the frost painted all the trees silver. Then they invited the north wind to stay with them. And he came. He roared all day about the garden and blew the chimney pots down. This is a delightful spot, he said. We must ask the hail on a visit. And so the hail came. I cannot understand why the spring is so late in coming, said the selfish giant, as he sat and looked out at his cold white garden. I hope there will be a change in the weather. But the spring never came, nor the summer. The autumn gave golden fruit to every garden, but to the giant's garden she gave none. He is too selfish, she said. So it was always winter there, and the north wind, and the hail, and the frost, and the snow dance about through the trees. One morning, the giant was lying awake in bed when he heard some lovely music. It was really only a little linnet singing outside his window, but 
It was so long since he had heard the birds sing in his garden that it seemed to him to be the most beautiful music in the world. Then the hail stopped dancing over his head and the north wind ceased roaring and a delicious perfume came to him through the open casement. I believe spring has come at last, said the giant, and he jumped out of bed and looked out. What did he see? He saw a most wonderful sight. Through a little hole in the wall, the children had crept in and they were sitting in the branches of the trees. In every tree that he could see, there was a little child and the trees were so glad to have children back again and that they had covered themselves with blossoms and they were waving their arms gently above the children's heads. Only in one corner, it was still winter. It was the farthest corner of the garden and in it was standing a little boy. He was so small that he could reach up to the branches of the tree and he was wandering all around it, crying bitterly. The poor tree was still quite covered with frost and snow and the north wind was blowing and roaring above it. And the giant's heart melted as he looked out. How selfish I have been, he said. Now I know why the spring would not come here. He crept downstairs and opened the front door and went out into the garden. But when the children saw him, they were so frightened that they all ran away and the garden became winter again. Only the little boy did not run for his eyes were so full of tears that he did not see the giant coming. And the giant stole up behind him and took him gently in his hand and put him up into the tree. And the tree broke at once into the blossom, and the birds came and sang on it, and the little boy stretched out his two arms and flung them around the giant's neck and kissed him. And the other children, when they saw that the giant was not wicked any longer, came running back, and with them came the spring. It is your garden now, little children, said the giant, and he took a great axe and knocked down the wall. And when the people were going to market at twelve o'clock, they found the giant playing with the children. In the most beautiful garden they had ever seen. Selfish Giant by Oscar Wilde